I'm Dr. Sally Foote. I am a veterinarian and, and animal behaviorist. I have over 35 years of general practice experience, uh, ownership of a veterinary practice, as well as how I'm being uh, providing veterinary behavior consults for our clients. I've, I have really recently, in the last few years, really uh, focused a lot on, besides behavior consultation, educating veterinary staff, clients and other animal care professionals on how to decrease stress whenever pets are in care, whether at home or at the veterinary clinic. Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love doing these Facebook Lives and I'm gonna post them also on my YouTube channel, which is Dr. Sally J. Foote. And um, I love hearing your comments and everything afterwards. So thanks everybody for joining. So today's topic, uh, I call this the low stress veterinary care, LSVC. Okay, that's what some of these initials are. Um, and so this is what I call the care equation. I've recently been providing um, in-clinic staff immersion uh, um, training, um, and I call low-stress veterinary care because it's a combination of the fear-free uh, programs, techniques with the low-stress handling program techniques from Dr. Sophia Yen, some cooperative care techniques, things from the uh, feline, um, feline friendly, cat friendly practice um, it principle. So it brings it all together. It's how I combine those things when I'm educating to uh, veterinary staff, especially in the clinic. And the situation that always arises, no matter whether you're a new hire, you know, with low experience versus high experience, is when our patients need to come in for care. So they're coming in for care. And especially if they're anxious or aggressive, how we are how we're making sure that we have that examination, that care experience being the least stressful for the patient. Now we also have a situation if it's a new client, right? The first time they've ever come in, we don't know anything about them. It might even be the very first time this pet is ever getting a vet exam. So I, I started thinking what a good friend of mine, Dr. Esther Ling said one time when talking about, you know, the drive by injection, right? And how we set all that up. She says, you know, the client is always a part of the equation for care. And I love that because it's presenting it sort of like a math equation that if that client participation is zero, then it's gonna equal zero. We're not gonna be providing care. So I started, as I thought about all the components that go into it, I thought about what is the equation? All right, so let me go through some of what I've written up here for you. All right, so first of all, if we have a calm pet, you know, a pet who comes in the carrier, you know, gets out of the car, and they're just looking around, they're not, pulling away, they're not avoiding coming in the front door, they're taking maybe some toss treats in the waiting area or out in the parking lot. Okay, so this is a calm pet. So think of it like a passing score, right? Like a score you need to get, you need to achieve in order like to pass the course, get the grade, whatever, in order to have this care delivered, given, all right? So at the very least, and these are what I would call, these are the things that are non-negotiable that we always provide when we're setting up appointments and providing care. So first we have to have client to staff communication, CSC. Uh, so the client and staff communication is between setting up the appointment, what we tell them, we, like, we want them coming hungry, or what, it, what, are, you know, what are we doing today? What, what is care that you need today? Is there anything else, okay? And especially the doctor may triage the care. So we've set up client expectations and the client knows what their role is going to be. Secondly, uh, we're gonna have trigger management here. We're gonna strip the area of triggers. Now, first exam, we don't know what gets this animal triggered up necessarily, even if the client filled out a pre, you know, form saying what the pet doesn't like. So we go to where the most common triggers, get that from my top five low stress handling course for dogs and cats. What are the most common triggers for the dog or the cat? And let's just strip the room of it to start with. Let's set them up for success. Okay, so we've stripped the room or stripped the area for triggers. So we're doing, we're already starting with trigger management. Uh, the CA stands for calm arrival. This animal, we need them in a state of, of at least being able to walk into the building, being able to, you know, not be hissing, not be striking, not be growling, not be lunging up, not be barking. Okay, they need to be not physically agitated, not showing any of the body language signs of high stress, high anxiety. They might be a little bit anxious or a little bit nervous, but they can function. So it's about functionality, okay? Uh, SSC, staff to staff communication. 
we need to have established that after the intake and the history, the handler, the technician is communicating to the veterinarian, this is a level of FAS. This is what this animal, the, the laundry list for today, uh, what their FAS is and the veterinarian decides the priority of what needs to be taken care of today, that's your triage. And the two, the doctor to technician, or if it's two technicians, already decide on what the, what the handling plan is going to be before they start on the animals. You've got staff to staff communication. And last one, time allotment. Do we have enough time allotted for what then the triaged list is for today, of course, based on the calm arrival, et cetera, for this, client, for this patient coming in today? So these five always have to be in place, you know, and, and figured out. And let's say we give each one of these factors a score of one, okay, just as a, a baseline. When everything's going good with a calm animal, we each one of these planned out and provided for that animal is a score of one, so we get a total of five. Like five is the passing score, you get your care, right? So that even if the animal seems calm, but the client says, oh, you know, I know he's due for, I, I made an appointment for a nail trim, but you know, he's had runny diarrhea for the last two days and he threw up four times this morning. I thought I'd keep the appointment so you could check him out and you guys scheduled five minutes with a tech appointment. <laughs> okay, no, we don't have the time for this today, all right? Especially if everything else is listed on. Okay, so now, so that's our minimum, minimum five for calm animal. So what else do we get? Okay, this is a lot of times, maybe 50% of our clientele, maybe not, depending if you're in emergency care, what, you know, what your, what your clientele is, et cetera. Okay, we're gonna have then our anxious animals, and I define that as animals who are showing an FAS above two. When you're using the fear-free FAS scale, we're gonna say two, if you're looking at the ladders of aggression from Dr. Shepard or Mind for the Cat that are posted you know, on my website, we're gonna be above a level four on either one of those ladders of aggression. So we're just transitioning from that green to the yellow zone. So in these animals or an animal who's aggressive, that animal is already at stare, stare, lunge, bark, hiss, swat. Or lastly, if this animal is coming in with a painful, a painful body condition, they have just been smacked in the head by a softball. They have an ulcer on their eye. They have a broken nail. They have an anal gland abscess. They have an infected ear, okay? That, or they are vomiting and diarrhea for the last two days, okay? So we now have them in pain. So because we now have, a, they are presenting in a way that we know that there is a higher level of adrenaline going on in the body, there is more likelihood that they're already coming presented in a physiologically stressed state, even if they look calm and happy as they're walking in. We still need to consider these additional factors as we get to the equation of providing low stress veterinary care. So in a good world, we have 10 factors here that we're always going to be putting into place. And, if, and then I'm gonna go over which factors may not be present and how you adjust what, how much your factor has to be, because the score now is gonna to have to equal 10, okay? It, with each of these 10 factors in place at a level one, you see we equal a 10. If any one of these factors come out of the equation, the other factors have to increase in their value. And that is the point that we all have to really understand and communicate to our client. And many of these points, they have to increase in value, are really on the client. They're on the client to prepare the patient for coming into us. Yes, there's factors we have to increase in ourselves, but it isn't all on us. Okay, so let's go with the first really good world. Here are the 10 factors we're gonna have for our anxious, aggressive, or in pain client presented to us. Okay, we go back to client staff communication, right? Oh, that dog just got smacked in the head with the softball. Let's um, throw, throw a towel over his head, a blanket over his head as you pick him up to put him in the car because he's in pain, he may bite you, right? So we're, we're helping the client to understand that he's already in pain, he may be higher and more triggered to bite, right? Okay, that's just an example. Uh, the trigger stripping. It's gonna be very important, especially for animals in pain, that we keep things quiet. They tend to startle more to noise. Uh, we may also be much more mindful of 
Maybe we're gonna do the exam on the floor. Uh, maybe we are going to uh, use the pheromones, okay? Um, but anyway, we're gonna really strip away any possible triggers. Don't let this dog see another dog in the waiting room. That's, let's decrease any hands on this cat's body. We're gonna use the same more toweling techniques, okay? But we're really gonna strip away the triggers. Third one is going to be a calm arrival. We want to coach the client. Remember, now we're going back to, we have to tell, coach the client on how to help their pet have the calmest arrival possible, knowing that they're already anxious and aggressive. Then we're going to have the, um, excuse me, staff to staff communication. This is become, going to become even more important when telling the doctor the level of FAS and what is the presentation that there may be pain. That I'm out maybe wanting to use preemptive pain relief or really then go to the use of a safety tool like a muzzle, an Elizabethan collar, uh, a hooding because pain triggered aggression is normal. Now then we're going to go to our staff training level. I'm going to want to make sure that my staff has the training for how to properly use a hood, how to position the animal, okay? And I myself do, does as well for how to approach the animal properly for conducting the exam in a less stressful way, especially if they're in pain or aggressive. Uh, physical preparation of the patient. We want to be mindful of, or that the animal is able to stand for exam, or they are, they're comfortable enough to be able to tolerate the touch, etc. Then we have medical preparation. Of course, that's our medications, supplements, or diets, or pheromones that can be used to help aid in lowering stress. And then we do an after action review. After we've done all these, okay, how did it go? Let's make sure we record it in the record, communicate to the client, this worked out well, et cetera. Okay, so you have those 10 points, each one worth one equal to a 10, yay. So let's say we have our drug resistant client, all right? You sent home the gabapentin and trazodone and your CSR even said, please be sure to give them the trazodone and gabapentin. And the client says, okay, well, but then they bring the animal and they, they say, you know, I want to try it today without giving him any medication. I didn't give him the gabapentin and trazodone. All right, so what happened? This came out. So in order for this to equal 10, each one of these is now going to have to become like a 1.2. Excuse me. We have to, because 1.2 times 9 is what equals 10. So... All right, if they walked in and told you that, and you couldn't now communicate to the client even more about, well, then he's really gonna need to come hungry. Let's bring him up by the back door so we don't, you know, uh, he doesn't see the trigger of walking through the waiting room, right? If you didn't have the chance to communicate with the client, this is where these surprises, it's even more important to understand, you know, this impact. So let's say you couldn't communicate more to the client for prep, then that, you know, if the client has not, already had that dog really super say happy about wearing a muzzle because you probably use medication because of bite risk. Like the client didn't say, oh, well, we've done our homework. I've practiced with that muzzle really well and he loves wearing it. I think we can do this without the transit on gabapentin. And the client pulls out the muzzle and the dog shoves his face right in happily. See, that would be a 1.4 on uh, the safety tool learning. Okay, well, if that maybe we'll equal 10. You can go ahead and do the, uh, do the care that day. But if that client has not done anything to make the safety tool better, they did not communicate, you will not equal 10. And you, and you might get started and see these factors and say, no, we can't do it today, we're rescheduling, you're gonna pay me, whatever the time was for this minimal exam. And that now you will definitely speak to the need of medication or it's my, like what I call, let's make a deal moment with the client or look client. You have to do this. Here is the Muzzle Up Project videos. Here's Dr. Foote's happy muzzling. Send us a video of your dog wearing the muzzle happily before we schedule the next appointment. That's how you will know that you've got this factor higher. Maybe the uh, client, the client staff communication, client missed the voicemail because they never checked the voicemail. All right, what way is best to communicate with you? Texting? What is it? Because obviously, you didn't tell us you skipped the meds. And with skipping the meds, we were not prepared. We couldn't tell you about the importance of preparing for the muzzle, right? So it set it up for failure, not success. So therefore, 
we may go back and that's part of this after action review. So do you understand how if we start taking away things like I said, the medication, or let's say the safety tool learning, <laughs> right? They don't do the muzzle prep, they haven't done the hooding learning. It's really gonna have to increase all of these other factors from even more to be able to provide a safe exam. And let's say, for example, I don't have a staff member, staff training here, who really knows how to line them up on the wall, hold them with the knees, signal to me, do a shot, I duck out, they leave the dog forward. If I don't have a person here today, I only have three new hires from the tech school who haven't learned it, and I have a 150 pound Rottweiler here, I'm not gonna do it. See that, I'm not at 10. I'm not gonna do it. You have to hit this passing score. So that's the concept of the veterinary care equation. And as you can see, certainly for client to staff communication, uh, calm arrival, um, the safety tools. We have, of course, physical preparation once the animal stand for exam. And if we have medication, these are at least four factors that always involve the client. So drop-offs and we'll just get the job done is not, it's not providing low-stress veterinary care and it sets our patients up for more failure. So this is, this, these, are, these are the points where and why the client is always a part of the equation. I would have to say this, where it all really starts, of course, is with client communication, right? Setting them up for realistic expectations what we can and we cannot do. So some thoughts for how to do this without getting into half hour phone calls with the clients for setup, et cetera, et cetera. That just is not realistic. I was trying to run a veterinary practice. I totally understand that. So a few things. To your existing client, your new client forms, and I hope these are like online forms that people can just directly fill out, like through Google Forms or Jot Forms. So that's where most people want to do it today, okay? Uh, require that they're filled out before you can schedule the appointment. Okay, that's, a, that's like an admission ticket. And to that form, add just a couple questions. One question will be, and this is for commenting. If you wanna make it a check off, at least you can, but describe to me what your pet acts like for travel arrival and during the exam at the veterinary clinic. Okay, tell me everything about it. Number two, the second one would be, if you, then the second thing would be, if your pet has ever had medication to help with veterinary exams, what effect did it have on your pet? Now this is where you'll start to get the, oh my gosh, she was groggy for eight hours afterward, I don't ever wanna give that medication again. This is where you can start to filter out, I think, that drug resistant client, okay? Because you may have seen from a previous record, oh, they got terazidone and gabapentin, but you won't know that they didn't give it or right now they don't wanna give it because of how groggy he was at home. Um, last question would be, what part of the veterinary exam does your pet not like? It might be about touching parts of their body, but it also may be the weight in the waiting room. It may be in the small veterinary exam room. It may be taking him to the back. Okay, there's lots of different aspects and we need to know for this patient which aspect of it it is because that's the trigger. And that's what goes back to your trigger stripping that you need to know about. Um, I Another thing I would suggest is if in these, like this quick history, you're getting, oh, he growls or he hisses or he, oh, he goes bonkers in the, in the parking lot, require three happy veterinary visits. Okay, this is just coming in and coming out of the waiting room, toss him a reward, have the rewards at the scale, maybe just showing up outside in the parking lot. And the client will have, you will have to see, the client may have to send you video if it's after hours to verify, I did come in for this and you can see how happy the patient is. Or again, this is your staff to staff communication. Your CSR at the front desk may say, yep, Rocco the Rottweiler came in, came and walked in the waiting room happily, tossed, the client tossed some treats on the scale, he got right in, I tossed him some, some treats, he was happy around me. He let the doctor just walk by and toss treats. Okay, fine. We have the verification then of that. Yes, you did your three happy vet exams. And now we can schedule because he's happy enough. Or even if I walked out and I said, okay, you're staring at me and you don't like me. In many of our states, a visual exam is enough that now I can prescribe the medication. And I can quickly explain to the client, see, he's getting a little upset. So this is why we need to do this. Okay. So this is some ways of how to... Follow 
the low stress veterinary care equation and how the client then is a part of the equation and how to um, how to train your staff and how to have your client be prepared be prepared excuse me for being a part of that equation thank you very much i really appreciate everybody's attendance uh, make sure you go to my website under the veterinary resources tab and download those ladders of aggression have them for handout to your clients paste them up in your walls really being very specific in our language to each other this is where a lot of this helps out I do have some videos on my uh, YouTube channel also that can help with clients for like muzzle preparation um, and also, you know, riding in the car, et cetera, to help make life a bit easier. And there are some other resources as well. Thank you very much. Um, and consider, I do have on my website also under the vet veterinary um, tab, information about my immersion classes here at the Learning Center in Tuscola. Also how I can come into your clinic and do this staff training with your staff, I have the handouts, the SOPs, uh, and also, um, and I will walk through your clinic to outline exactly how and where we can provide this care. So we are um, giving that 10 fact, equaling a 10, especially for more difficult patients. Thank you much, and every thank you very much, and everybody, you have a great week. Bye bye.